Welcome back to the MOOC course on qualitative research methods. My name is Aradhana Malik and I am helping you with this course. And uh, in the previous lecture, we had started the discussion on case studies as a strategy of inquiry into qualitative research methods. In this lecture, we are going to continue with the discussion that we started on in the last lecture. So, let us move on. We were talking about what case studies were. In this lecture, we will discuss the uh, organization of a case study and case selection and we will wind up with some ethical concerns about case studies. Okay. So, the conceptual structure of the case, hmm. a typical case study is organized around a number of research questions or issues which center around a common theme. So, it is a holistic wholesome unit within itself with its own complexities in terms of different influences, subsections, etcetera. So, there is an issue that is not highlighted, there is an issue that is implicitly brought out through the description of the situation that we are dealing with, but there is a central theme or a set of themes that emerge out of this case study, there is a central issue along with its own complexities, along with its own chaos that is the way it appears or as close to the way it appears in real life and we present it in a manner that is as close to a real life representation of that issue as possible. Huh. So, it is a wholesome unit, it is a holistic wholesome unit within itself with its own complexities in terms of different influences, subsections, impacts, actors, participants, you know stakeholders. Uh, tangential issues etcetera and this whole complexity focused around a central theme forms the case study. So, the case study is primarily a, 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 a description of or a, a very very in depth inquiry into a, a particular issue that is bothering us that we would like to bring out and that we would like to resolve through in and through discussion. The choice of issues depends on the questions the researcher wants answers to. Then to treat the case as an example, uh, as an exemplar, researchers ask which issues bring out our initial concerns. So, which of these issues are really related to our initial concerns, the dominant theme or to maximize understanding of the case, they will ask which issues seek our compelling uniqueness. Hmm. So, to find out uh, the you know what is unique about the case or to exemplify something in the case, we say okay, what is it that we are dealing with, what are the different issues that we are dealing with, then or what is the dominant theme here. To maximize understanding of the case, we say which issues seek our compelling uniqueness. For an evaluation study, we ask which issues reveal merit and shortcoming. Hmm. So, just, just to find out then but in general we ask which issues facilitate the planning and activities of inquiry including inspiring and rehabilitating the researchers. So, what, what is it that we want to deal with, what is it that we want to bring out, what is it that we want to inquire into, what is it that we are trying to, you, uh, to highlight, what is it that we want resolved. Hmm. If the case study is to be representational or instrumental, former sampling is required to choose a case that represents maximum characteristics of the population. So, if it is representational, if it is instrumental, if it is going to highlight the characteristics of a population, then we need to pick the case that really incorporates the or that, that represents the as many of the characteristics of the general population as possible. So, a former sampling is required. So, various ways in which we pick cases, the main question is what is it that we want to talk about? What should our story reveal? What should our story bring to the fore? What should our story focus on? That focus, determination of that focus is absolutely essential here. Storytelling. The case may be organized in such a way that it tells its own story. So, we bring out a theme and then we narrate the incidents, we build a story in such a way, we build the narration in such a way that the case itself leads the reader to the central theme without the author having to explicitly mention it. The presentation styles of the story could be realist 
could be impressionist, could be confessional, could be critical, formal, literary and jointly told. So, different ways in which we can tell the story. Then what, how and how much is to be told is decided by the researcher depending on the issue that is being explored and what the researcher wants done by the case study. So, if you are writing a case study for discussion in a say in a management program, in a postgraduate management program, then may be a different kind of input would be required. If you are writing a case study just to highlight the issues experienced by a situation just so that these things come to the fore and they can be applied across the industry, then the case study would need to be written differently. The, 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 the volume, the quality and quantity of what you say depends on you as the researcher, depends on the theme that you are talking about and the ultimate goal of the case study, what you want the case study to be used as. So, that will really determine what you do and of course, these things go hand in hand. You can't just say that I am going to write a teaching case and then do it. I mean, things evolve, you know. So, yes, having some sort of an idea in the beginning helps, but then as we write the case study, we realize that there are things that evolve as we get more and more information and the way we structure it will depend on the information that is available to us, how we interpret that information, how we are able to express it, whether or not we are able to tie it in. Uh, properly with each other, different parts of the information are tied in with each other or not. So, how compelling the story is will determine what it is ultimately used for, but at the same time some focus needs to be there regarding what you would like it to be used for. <coughs> Learning from the particular case, what do we learn from a particular case? The researcher's main aim in writing a case is to teach the readers something they do not know. The case study does not, you know, we will say, okay, a case study highlights a slice of life, but then it has to be something unique, something special. The in depth inquiry brings to the fore things that are not easily accessible by the general population. So, there has to be something new in the case study. The author may do it, or the researcher may do it didactically, or through discover learning, in which the researcher provides materials for the reader to learn on their own things the teacher does not know as well as those he or she does know. So, you tie in the new things with whatever you know and you tie in the new things what, with whatever your students would know or with whatever your readers may know and then you take the reader from what is known to what can be known and you extend the body of knowledge. Knowledge transfer from the reader, uh, from the researcher to reader, uh, reader through a case, the researcher starts from a point of knowledge that is common to both and then takes the reader to observe, accept and appreciate the unknown. So, the reader is taken to a point where the reader first sees what is out there, this reader first receives, becomes alert to whatever is out there, then the reader becomes receptive to the new information that is out there and then the reader imbibes the new information that is out there. So, these are the three stages. So, observance, acceptance, observation, acceptance and appreciation of the unknown. So, something new that the reader could be interested in. The interest is built along with the story and the reader is tuned to something new that is being shown to the reader and then it has to be so compelling, so new, so rooted in the old, you know it cannot be totally rooted in the old because the reader will lose interest. It cannot be totally new, uh, the, uh, so that the uh, reader will not be able to relate to it. It has to be rooted in the old and stretched into the new and the, the finesse or the expertise of the researcher lies in taking the reader from what is known to what is not known and helping the reader appreciate the unknown and the value of the unknown. Triangulation is something we have discussed earlier also. It is a technique used for case studies, wherein the researcher uses multiple perceptions to clarify meaning by identifying the different ways the phenomenon is being seen, 
verifying the repeatability of an observation. So, triangulation is very, very important, very critical to a case study, where the researcher observes the same phenomenon from different perspectives and includes different perspectives into the observation, into the way the case is, is portrayed to the audience. So, you, you, you uh, describe a situation, then you validate it with facts and figures, then you maybe add on the opinions of people who have been in that situation, then you could also you know add your own informed judgment. So, different ways of looking at the same situation form or triangulate the information that is presented. Comparisons are when the case is used to compare two phenomena, uh, the comparison is substituted for the case as the focus of the study. So, the case highlights something that can be that is different from the others in the general population. So, it is a unit and whatever is described highlights the differences between what is described and what it is a part of, what it is similar to. Arrangements of the study, the work of a researcher is observational and reflect, uh, reflective. Uh, he or she observes the situation and then draws out local foreshadowed and consequential meanings, which form a part of the case record. So, we find out, we observe the situation and then we draw the meanings, we draw, we, we find out what kinds of meanings emerge from the case record after the analysis of the situation. Teaming, a case study research team is formed when the study is too complex. We need people, we need informants, we need people to collect data depending on the volume of data we are collecting, depending on what we are studying, depending on the issue we are trying to highlight. We may require a team of people working that we work with in order to draw out this information, in order to put this information together, in order to interpret the information that we have garnered. So, it, the research team is formed. The team leader assigns the study of each part to each team member. Then each member follows a common theme. So, we work like a team and each member follows the theme of the study. All team members meet and discuss their work with other members of the team and then the team leader synthesizes all the parts and presents them as a unified case study. So, the work is divided up knowing fully well that this work is going to go in as a common unit, common body of work. So, the theme is primary and all the members of the research team remember the theme and collect information along the same theme. Some ethical concerns in conducting case study research, some concerns in, in conducting uh, case study research are first is informed consent. Now, when we talk about cases, we are talking about real life, we are talking about real situations, we are talking about a slice of life of the people who are being affected by that situation. So, they need to know that we are studying them. People in that situation need to know that we are studying them. We need to get informed consent in writing from the people whose lives we are observing. This is absolutely critical, this cannot be missed the case study should not begin till informed consent is sought and till the conditions under which the information is being given is respected the way or is the, the conditions are met the way they need to be met. The requirements of getting that information are fulfilled and we cannot just take the information and then do whatever we want with it. That is absolutely unethical. If somebody gives us information on the condition that there identity will not be revealed, we should not reveal the identity of the informant till we get a written consent from them. If the uh, informant says, please do not reveal the identity of my organization, fair enough, we will write up the case in such a way that the identity of the organization is masked to such an extent that people cannot even guess it. Now, if people can guess it, then that is a very, uh, that is a very inappropriate way of handling information and that should not be done. If it is so critical, if the, the organization can be endangered, that then we must find other ways to approach the same information, but at no cost should we break the trust that the informant has placed in us, that the participants of the case study have placed in us. 
anonymity may be a condition may be required it just depends on what one is trying to highlight what one is trying to bring to the fore again informed consent is required should be honored you know if we are getting the information from people or if we are describing something that is likely to harm or hamper the growth or hamper the or disturb the current situation of the participants involved so we must maintain absolute confidentiality wherever there is the slightest risk of the current situation of the participants being disturbed hmm. so we must be very careful very limited public access to records that can disturb the current situation we must at all times again i'm going to keep repeating this till you my students till my listeners <laughs> believe this we cannot disturb the current situation the stability in the current situation so we must limit the access to records we have that are not in public domain uh, for uh, with the explicit aim of protecting the stability of the situation that we have studied then minimization we must do our best to minimize the risks associated with participation and disclosure of case results and interpretation we must realize that once we get this information and publish it different people with different backgrounds with different interpretations with different filters are going to have access to it and we must anticipate these risks to the extent possible ahead of time and we must do our best to minimize these risks to the extent possible and we must inform our participants about the risks that are involved if the information we are generating becomes public it always helps to get to keep the the informants and the participants in the loop when we are writing the case so that they can guide us as to what can and cannot be put out in the public domain what can and cannot be shared with people outside of their organization what should and should not be a part of our case study so we must not breach there or we must not break the uh, or dishonor the faith they have in us ethical issues in case writing another set of issues in now the the issues that emerge in case writing are the first one is personal bias hmm. we may be biased uh, you know the our personal biases and attitudes may affect the choice of issues and the treatment of those issues so we must acknowledge the biases that we bring to the for or to the case study and we must try and minimize the interference or the 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 uh, the effect of the filters that we see the world through subjectivity is the other issue in case writing since the scope of the case is limited and except in large cases only one researcher observes the situation for a long time it becomes very difficult to write the case in an objective opinion free manner hence the problem of subjectivity is likely to creep in so this is the other ethical issue in case writing now uh, subjectivity is the the uh, lack of objectivity it is the multiple it is the possibility of multiple interpretations of a case study of the way this information is presented and if we observe a situation for a long time then Uh, uh then then the 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 uh, possibility of us observing the situation in an opinion free in an objective in a uh, uh, an unbiased manner are reduced we become attached we become connected to the situation so that is another problem with writing of case studies and that is another ethical issue that we need to be very very careful of and i think that is all we have time for in this particular class we will uh, you know take up some more issues on the strategies of inquiry in uh, qualitative research methods in the next class thank you very much for listening